When I perform with cards, I know that there is always someone in the audience who thinks, ah, I wish I could do that. I would quit my job immediately and go to break the bank of a casino. <laughs> in case some of you are thinking about the same thing, today I want to give you a few tips to get you started on the right road. First of all, you have to practice until you are able to grab any deck of cards and immediately find... an ace. If some of you have ever seen the movie The Sting, you may recall a scene where John Scarney's hands, doubling the ones of Paul Newman, show that it is possible to begin with one ace on top of the deck and then give it a series of cards just like this but still end up with the same ace on top. What John Scarney didn't show in the movie is that it's also possible to shuffle these cards and then give them a cut, so combining both techniques. And although all the remaining cards get thoroughly mixed, you can still end up with the same ace on top. Now, I have to say you can't do much with just one ace in a game of cards, that's why you have to learn how to locate the second ace. It's even better if you can find the third one, and if you really want to be sure that you will end up in the money, you have to know where the fourth and final ace is too. If you manage to control all four aces on top of the deck during a game of poker, you can't stop there, you have to go further than that. If I want those aces to fall in my hand, I have to pre-order the cards for the gambler's cold stacking. And that's just what I'll try to do now. I will give this card a series of shuffles and in the meantime, I'm not going to be primarily concerned with mixing the cards, I'm going to be primarily concerned with repositioning those aces, so that when I deal, I will get the aces. One last shuffle and I'll be ready. I'm ready. Let's try a five-handed game of draw poker. And you can see who receives the ace. I guarantee that you can learn how to do all this. It takes just half an hour of practice. Every day, for the next ten years. And this is what is known as stacking a poker hand. Now, Four aces guarantee that I will win this hand, plus the pot, but they don't necessarily mean that I will win a large pot. That's why you have to do something slightly harder and deal the other players something to bet on. That's why I dealt to this player a pot hand of four tens. Player two will bet heavily on his pot hand of four jacks, so will player three with his pot hand of four queens, and I will take him to the cleaners with his pad hand of four kings. Any questions? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what I have just shown you would be considered by any professional cheater as the epitome of card manipulation. He said modestly. <laughs> But I thought that there must be a set of the art technique to cheat at cards, something that goes far beyond what I've just shown you. And to my knowledge, I've never seen or heard of someone who is able to do what I'm about to try. Really. And I've gotten to the point where just with a couple of shuffles I can stack the deck just like before, but this time I would stack the deck for a poker game but for a bridge game. In bridge there are four players, each of whom receives exactly a quarter of the deck, that is, 13 cards. The perfect hand in bridge is called Grand Slam, which consists of 13 cards all of the same suit, almost like a real flush in a poker game. The odds against getting such a hand are of 152 billions to 1, which, trust me, is a huge number. <laughs> But, uh, of course, those odds apply only in a honest game. Because I did give this player a Grand Slam in clubs, but in bridge, diamonds are to rank clubs for people sitting in the back, they are in numerical order, a Grand Slam hand in hearts, but the truly perfect bridge hand is an unbeatable Grand Slam hand in... 
space.